Please stand clear of the doors. Hey guys, I'm on the. I mean, I'm so tired. I can't wait to get back to the poly and go ahead and relax. Yeah, yeah, me too. Who has the Who has the K? The K? What do you mean the K? You talking about a? Yeah, I gave you the K to get back in. You're talking about a key? No, it's K. Key. K. K E Y. Key. C A Y. K. Oh, C A Y K. I'm confused. <laughs> Welcome to episode 61 of the Diz His Podcast. I'm one of your castaways, Joe. I'm Alex. I'm Adam. Today, we will be giving the his on Castaway Key. So, have you been there? No. Have you been there? No, I have not. And, you know, I know you- I got lost. I was looking for Castaway Key or K. I was looking for K. Oh, and you got lost? So yeah. Is there a Castaway K near there? No, apparently that's not how you say- key or spell it <laughs> yeah so castaway uh key so i guess i'm the only one that's been there and i'm gonna rate it a 10 out of 10 really oh my gosh do they, they pay, pay you to go, go there, there? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> i guess not uh they don't pay me to go there but it is an a relaxing place it's paradise when you think of paradise when you think of you know the nice beaches and mm-hmm. the super super clean water and just relaxation and hammocks and it is uh it, it's that. It's that um, picture of paradise. That's what Castaway Key is. I'm actually yeah. upset because anyone who's listening to like their first or second time is going to think that me and Alex planned that out. But if you know us, we don't plan anything out. And we that do not. Great improv. <laughs> what do you mean? Plan what out? Where we both said, uh, oh. <laughs> did they pay you? <laughs> oh, huh. yeah. Yeah, no, they don't pay you. Trust me. They don't pay you. But I mean, no. I'm not even going to try to make an argument for that. <laughs> But I mean, everything I read about it, everyone says it's paradise. It's 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 man made paradise. Yeah, it literally is kind of man made the way that it's it's developed. But uh-huh. um, I mean, it's the Bahamas, man. The Bahamas is paradise. Yeah, everyone loves Bahamas. Yeah, yeah, it is definitely paradise. Um, I don't, I haven't heard anyone complain about Castaway at all ever. I have never heard anyone say anything negative about Castaway. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually those are the days that are usually when you go on a cruise. On a Disney cruise, you're you're there for one day. That's one of the stops. Right, is the the island. Right, every once in a while, you'll get a cruise that double dips on an island. Ooh, yeah, and they call it like double dipping. You know, yeah, and you get to go twice. And I haven't, I have yet to experience that. But uh, I mean, that that's to me on a Disney cruise is the cruise boat and the island. Um, so when I when I when I got to go to Alaska, I didn't get to experience the island. Right, right Castaway. Um, but that's fine because I was in Alaska. Yeah. So back to the name. If key is spelled out <laughs> C-A-Y, why is it not the Keeman Islands? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I ever hear, I've heard people say both ways, man. Kesway Key, Kesway K. I mean, I know that you're saying on the Disney video, you heard him say. Well, no, no, no. Look up. I look it up. Yeah, if you look up the translation, it's key. Mm-hmm. People, I've heard people on the boat say it both not, ways. No, I'm not talking about just Disney's island. Just any yeah. C-A-Ys in general is supposed to be pronounced key. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Yeah. Like Gordo Key, which we'll talk but about. But we have- Gorda, a, sorry, female. <laughs> but we have a lot of history to get to. Yes. So let's get to the his on Castaway Key. Castaway Key is a private island owned by the Bahamas, but written out by Disney. Disney rented formerly named Gorda Key for 99 years in 1996. Disney made this purchase a year before their first cruise ever set sail. Castaway Key is a slice of paradise built by Disney for their guests to enjoy as a stop on some Disney cruise lines. Known as one of the best private cruise line beaches, Castaway Key has something for everyone in the family to enjoy. Shopping, a massage, Ride a bike, snorkel, canoe, tube, or simply relax by one of the four beaches. Anyone and everyone will get back to the ship relaxed and happy after visiting Disney's own paradise. It's a long contract. Yeah. Yeah, 99 years is definitely a long time. I wonder how much they have to pay for the renew it when it comes up. Well, you know, they're making, so you don't get to the other island on here, I don't think, right? Uh, no, it's, no. it's, it's so not really they, on they are They are. What's the other island's name? 
I'm not sure yet. Do you know what it is? No, but I was going to, if you were going to tell me the name, I'd be like, what's the episode called? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but they, uh, we, uh, the, Disney is getting another island. So yes. they have two islands. So I, I wonder if that's for leverage to not pay a whole bunch of money. Like, well, you know what? We could do our own, another island. Yeah. We don't I wonder, why, why did they do 99 years and not 100? Uh, may, Maybe know. it's um, league out like something, something with the, the contract or yeah. something like that. That if you yeah. go like an extra, if you go into the hundred, then it's like their domain. Like they then they have yeah. There has to be some legal reason. Yeah, or maybe someone just loves the number ninety nine. Yeah, no, that's good. true too. There's, Got it. But... And uh, there's a lot to do on this island. Yeah, there's a lot to do. I, I can't really get to everything to do on the island in this podcast. You know, it's like I covered a lot of it, but you, did. you, you did can't cover, cover everything. No, you can't. But there's a lot to do. You're, you're going to go there and you can spend, you can easily spend the whole week at, at a castaway. It sucks you're only there for a day. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely sucks. Uh, but I can tell you my first thing to do when I get on that island is, and I'm going to tell everyone else, if you haven't been on a Disney cruise, go get a hammock because the hammocks are, they, they're free, right? But that's like the first place everyone goes. So as soon as you get off that boat, get to a hammock because they're <laughs> going to fill up really fast. So that's the first thing I usually do is we go, we get a spot, buy a hammock and we just kind of lay around uh or the kids play make like sand castles and stuff like that they go down to the water so you'll find out later on in the episode but you know why i'm saying this but if you bring a service dog quote unquote but really it's like a ter- certain type of sniffing dog he might be able to find you some things oh. <laughs> <laughs> just put the service dog vest castaway key was originally named gorda key before disney changed his name after paying to lease it Gorda Key gets its name from the Spanish word, fat or round. Most Bohemian islands are long and narrow. However, Gorda Key is abnormally roundish. It is located near Great Abaco Island, which is southeast of Miami and northeast of Cuba. Gorda Key Island is built up behind the exposed reefs rather than on top of them. In the 1700s, it is rumored that the island may have been a common stopping point for pirates and is just north of the common trade routes used at the time. With its numerous hidden alcoves, it would have been a perfect hiding spot for pirates to camp and wait for passing ships. In the 1950s, two treasure hunters from Nassau came across a few objects of interest just off the shoals of the island. This included three coins and a 72-pound silver ingot, with markings showing they belonged to Spain's King Philip IV. It is very possible these could have come from the San Pedro, a Spanish galleon hauling treasure back to Spain until it was sunk in 1733. Gorda Key was used in the last century by farmers who lived on the neighboring islands. The soil provided at Gorda Key is very fertile and relatively rocky free. Because of the island's location, it is also well known as a place for refuge for fishermen, caught in bad weather. These fishermen would sometimes come back with their families to enjoy the picturesque beaches. A tiny village formed on the southern shores where farmers would rent out land for the Bohemian government. In the 1960s, Alvin Tucker flew over the island with a real estate agent from Nassau, looking for investments and purchased 150 acres of the island. Because the island was only accessible by boat, he had a runway put in for easier access. This is the 2,400-foot runway that still exists today and is used by Disney as a bike and tram path to Serenity Bay. Unfortunately, this remote and very unknown island with a runway strip became known to drug smugglers who would use it frequently to bring narcotics into Florida. Residents of the neighboring islands said they saw up to six planes a day landing. When Alvin Tucker heard of how his runway was being used, he tried to put a stop to it, but couldn't. Supposedly, the police were in on the operation. Alvin Tucker eventually no longer felt safe owning part of the island, so he sold it to a private company owned by Frank Barber who would later be revealed as a drug smuggler. As late as the 1980s, Gorda Key was known for being patrolled by men with big guns and Doberman Pinschers. Frank Barber thought of developing the island with some hotels for tourism, but this plan never saw the light of day because in 1983, police raided the island and found $100 million worth of cocaine. Barber was arrested and went to jail where he would eventually pass away. The island stopped receiving unwarranted planes and the Bohemians took back possession of the whole island. So there's actually a lot of history on the island. Yeah, he should have did a Google search on the barber guy. Would have known he was a drug smuggler. And I'm not sure how popular. <laughs> I'm not sure how uh, popular Google was in 1983. <laughs> 1981. Pretty popular. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it's crazy. Um, 
the history on that. Uh, it's crazy history. Yeah. Also on the runway, that's where they, I think they hold the uh, 5K. Yeah. Yeah. So, and so uh, the runway, I mean, I'm going to kind of visually kind of paint a picture here for you is that you get off the boat. You Hang get, on, I'm closing my eyes. <laughs> you get off the boat, you get on like a little tram or you can walk to the little shops. And after you get on the little shops is like where there's like the little beach area where every, it's like open to everyone, you mm-hmm. know, kids, families. Then you have to take the tram on the runway to get to the adult beach. Mm-hmm. That's where there's like food, you know, and that's where it's 18 and up. Um, but well, I have a whole bunch of memories I'm going to share. I have one memory I'm going to share for the memory section, but there's some other memories I'm going to share in, right. in between the other. Do they Why card is it? you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry? Do they card you at the beach? Do they have a bouncer? Yeah, man. Well, yeah, well you have your, they call it the, uh, <laughs> uh, what is it? Uh, your world pass. Oh, yeah, which yeah. Which is like your, you know. Yeah, your, talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Which is like your picture's on it. So you have to show that to uh, the people. Did you go to the adult beach? Yep. I mean, we, we went uh, both times, whatever. Oh, so you didn't have Nick with you when you went? No, and I'm going to talk about that here in a little bit, is that, you know, there's a place where you can drop off your kids. And Disney, you know, they really cater to kids, obviously. And uh, well, Sometimes you want to get away from those little things. I'm sorry? Sometimes you just want to get away from those little things <laughs> like called the, kids. Yeah, yeah. But no, when you go someplace, and of course everything's on lockdown when you drop your kids off, when you go there and they don't want to leave, then that makes you feel like, okay, well, it's okay for me to drop him off here because he wants to be here. Yeah. Or when he's asking like in the morning, oh, can I go ahead and go to the play area today? Right, right. Then you feel like, okay, well, you don't feel as guilty. bad about, yeah, you don't feel as gu- guilty <laughs> dropping him because they want to be there, right. you know? So, yeah. In 1996, Disney purchased a 99-year lease of the Gorda Key to turn into a Caribbean island paradise for the cruise guests. It took some 18 months and about $25 million for them to develop it into Castaway K. This included dredging 50,000 truckloads of sand from the Atlantic Ocean to expand the beaches. The pier was constructed to allow the Disney ships to dock alongside, thus removing the need for boats to get the passengers ashore. To create the mooring site of the ships, workers dredged sand and used explosives to blast coral and form a 1,700-foot channel about 35 feet deep and ranging from 200 to 400 feet wide. Interestingly enough, even with all that work and money poured into it, only about 55 acres of the 1,000-acre island are used. This surreal island has an average temperature of upper 60s to upper 70s. September is the rainiest month and can cause issues with the boat's docking. There are a couple shops, bar, recreational uh, rentals, and first aid stations, These charming Disney buildings are done in that perfectly ramshackle appearance, built by castaways. Though the runway is no longer used to land airplanes, it does serve as a path to get to the adults' only beach, Serenity Bay. Castaway Key first appeared to Disney fans in Splash, where Tom Hanks discovered Daryl Hannah, a beautiful mermaid. The island opened for business for the first time on July 30th, 1998. The island's only inhabitants are the 90 Disney employees, including custodians, boat captains, drivers, landscapers, and maintenance personnel. All the residents or castaways live in the crew compound. They have a private beach, gym, soccer field, indoor recreational area, and crew mess. Those that may have some time off when the ship is docked can go on the ship, watch some movies, and relax. Many of the island castaways will use the ships as their taxi ride home after several weeks or several months on the island. Most of the cruise ship's cast members come onto the island when the ship is docked to help round out the rest of the staff. A few native bohemians come to the island by boat on days there is a ship docked and run the local souvenir shop where they sell local goods and bohemian souvenirs. So I'm going to say something real quick. Have you guys ever done the word puzzle where it shows a color, but then that color is in a... the like a different color, like it'll say yellow, but it'll be in green and you have to go through. Yeah. Have you guys done that? I think you know what you're talking about. So give Alex some slack when he sees (laughs) C-A-Y and he says K. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I said it once there. I guess I didn't catch myself. That's all right. So, you know, the shops are the first thing you go to when you arrive on the island. Is it? And it's the last thing before you leave. Well, Well, yeah, gift shop at (laughs) the end of every ride. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, you learn so, that going on the Simpsons and, it's, and they're cool shops I actually has never been in, I haven't been in the shops um, so, and it's also pretty cool that uh, Splash was filmed there huh with Tom yeah. Hanks yeah. never and, seen it and, you never uh, see Splash no you never oh, seen Splash oh man yeah. 
I've seen the edits they it's made. It's on Disney the, Plus. Yeah, I've seen the edits they made for Disney Plus, but that was okay. It. And uh, actually, some of Pirates was filmed there too. Yes, it was. So I'm gonna tell you right now that there's nothing cooler than going to bed, right, and then waking up. And when you wake up, you're at Castaway, and you see the over, you see like the whole island, you know, like a bird's eye view. I guess you can say of the island because you're high up and uh-huh. you're. Oh, it's I so, mean, bird's eye would be looking down. I know, but <laughs> but you are kind of looking down because you're really high up an island, you know. You yeah. can kind of see the top of everything. So it's. Were you about to explain to me where an island is on it's, land? <laughs> it's sea level. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, did you wake up docked? Yeah, man. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. that's the same way when we. I went figure to you wake up and you just have to wait to get docked. No, oh. no. Sometimes that's pretty much what wakes you up. Is it the ship like turning around and trying to park? But you wake up, and you know the first time you can well, hear you the hear ship, the like, loud beep 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 when it's backing up. <laughs> no, but I mean when the ship's turning, you can hear the engines stopping and turning and trying to make uh, the maneuvers. Yeah. You well, know? yeah, because they usually put the propellers in like reverse to slow it down. Exactly, so you can hear when it's doing that. Uh, but the last time I was there, I woke up and we were there, and it was like you go out and we had balconies. So we go out and it's just like psh, cast away, and you're like, oh, oh, you're on the the correct side of the boat. Yeah. Because yeah. if you're on the other side of the boat, you, you wouldn't see, see it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, Castaway K, that was bought by Disney when? It was... When, 1996? 96. So, uh, is it still like a go-to thing to blast away, what was that, uh, 250,000 oh, square yeah. feet of coral? <laughs> yeah, probably wouldn't be uh, okay to do nowadays. No, yeah. no, it wouldn't. Because <laughs> you said it was 1,000 feet long, and you said approximately 250 feet wide. Yeah. Like, That's a lot of coral. That's they a lot have. of coral to... <laughs> get rid of for no yeah, reason that yeah is. i really think i mean not that. only the coral they're destroying just the explosions of the dynamite is going to mess up the yeah, uh, yeah. ecosystem right yeah yeah that probably wouldn't be okay now no definitely not which means the new island they're developing they probably had to do it more of a eco-friendly yeah 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 I think, and they're pretty creative how to find this an thing. island with not a lot around it to dock in or something yeah 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 and uh i want to say so the other cruise ships, you know, I'm going to sound like I'm trying to sell like Disney cruises. And that's like the only cruises I know, you know, or Disney Joe cruises. Joe gets discounts every time you mention that's no, when you buy it. I don't. It. But, uh, you know, I did some comparisons to like other cruises. I think that I'll be interested in going, trying like a Royal Caribbean cruise. Really? Yeah, I think You I would, would do a non-Disney cruise? Yeah, I would. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but there's a lot of things you get free at, on the Disney cruises that you wouldn't get free normally like on other cruises. Like, like the soda. Cream? Oh, no, they get free ice cream everywhere. We're going to talk about that later. Yeah. But there's things that you get for free. Like, uh-huh. I believe, like, hammocks. I'm not sure if hammocks and some of those stations that Disney has <laughs> on their island, they're free. And I don't think they're free on other islands. Wow, what's so funny about that? I just picture, like, you had to put down, you know, change in, like, a machine, and then the hammock comes down <laughs> so you can get into it. No, but there, there's definitely some things that that you get as complimentary that you wouldn't get uh-huh. on other cruise lines at the on the island. Despite the island's already rich history, Disney decided to create a whole backstory for Castaway Key. The Disney version is a little more wholesome. In the early 1920s, three explorers and their families set sail to the scattered islands of the Bahamas in search of fame and fortune. Shortly into their adventure, the crew battled a wild ocean storm that wrecked them on the island now called Castaway Key. The shipwrecked crew were fearful of their impending demise but eventually became intoxicated by the tropical beauty of the island. The leader of the expedition, Professor of Paleontology Cecil Wormy Chamberlain, continued his search on the island for Physeter Catadon, a prehistoric sperm whale, and ended up finding fossils. After his discovery, he decided to retire on Castaway Key, devoting the remainder of his years excavating the whale fossils. Professor Chamberlain had hired Captain Sandy Morton, his wife and his sons, to lead the crew on their adventure. After the storm, Captain Morton promised his wife that he would leave the life at sea to live on land, and what better land than the paradise of Castaway Key. The professor's protege, Dr. Max Prophet, had joined the expedition, but was not interested in fossils, but rather lost treasure. He found what he was looking for at the bottom of the lagoon and set up a dive trail in order to share these amazing artifacts. Gil, the captain's oldest son, and his three brothers opened Gil's fins and boats to take charge of the dive trails and all other water activities. A third explorer, Elan Vital MD, or Doc, signed on board in hopes of finding the fountain youth. Doc observed the youthful energy of the island and decided to open the island's clinic. Doc's wife, Mir Vital, decided the island lacked shops, so with her knowledge and experience, she commandeered a small island hut to make and sell jewelry with colorful painted seashells from the beach. 
Professor Chamberlain later decided that taking shells from the seashore disturbs the ecological balance of the island, so now Mir's sign in front of her store has the word seashell crossed out. Shortly after the castaways had landed on the island, they were befriended by a local man named Grins Alot. Grins taught the city folk the way of the island, from folklore to local customs like the great Jankanu celebration of the Bahamas. It was the essence of this festival that Mir decided to capture in the customs and clothing sold at her boutique. Marion Prophet, the young wife of Dr. Max, saw the need to educate the children of the island, as the castaways brought nearly a dozen with them. Marion set up discovery tents in a sandy cove near the whale dig, a convenient place for the children to study science, nature, music, literature, and the culture of this beautiful region. Together, she and Professor Chamberlain taught the children conservation awareness so that they would understand the importance of preserving the natural habitat of the island's flora and fauna. Cookie and his family had been the cooks on the ship and later ran Cookie's Barbecue, the only place to get good southern cooking on the island. The morning after the castaways landed on the island, Doc was deep in the forest looking for his fountain of youth, but found instead a man asleep in the cockpit of a downed plane. Cameron O'Flage, known as Cam, was an Australian island hopper in Bahamas. He had run out of gas during the storm, but landed safely in the marsh on the island. The castaways gave him some of their supplies, and Cookie whipped up Cam's first real meal in weeks. Wanting to give something back, Cam opened and outfitted the bar down at the end of the runway, using parts from his downed plane. Out of respect and gratitude for the hospitality of the new friends, he named it the Castaway Air Bar. The Castaway K Post Office is the only way to reach the outside world other than the boats that come to dock once in a while. The post office was opened by May B. Tamara, the first postmistress of Castaway Key. Enjoy your own adventures and add to the legend of Castaway Key. So just like any Disney attraction, Mm -hmm. it has its own story, which is pretty awesome. I mean, I don't think Disney Castaway members want to tell the story of how it was a smuggler's run <laughs> for yeah. narcotics. I don't think that's really on the Disney brand. What are you talking about? They have a ride called Smuggler's Run. In the future, in a far, far away <laughs> galaxy. With like made up like stuff. Like, and not yeah. with drugs. Yeah, yeah. That we know of. Yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome that they have this uh, whole story made up for the island, they which had, makes me... Go ahead. Was, they had fun making up those names too, huh? Yeah, and I'm really <laughs> interested and excited to hear what the story is for the new island's going to be. Oh, yeah, because they'll do that too. So when you're on the island, is the backstory, like, is that known? Or? No, I, I didn't see it at least because oh, I really? had no idea about this until you know, I read this. Oh, okay. Um, but I do want to talk about a couple of things here. The the barbecue place, mm-hmm. uh, Cook's Cookies. Barbecue, Cookies Barbecue, it's really, really good. That's, that's the, the adult area so you just when you drop your kid off and you can go to the barbecue place that's messed well, up. Says, what if the kids want well, it says the there's a cookies one and oh, cookies two yeah so cookies two is the adult one okay yeah so you go there and you get all your food and it's i mean really good there's hamburgers hot dogs steak fish all these different things mm-hmm. there's dessert well I, i'm not sure there's dessert. i think there's like chips and stuff like that so it's like sides mm-hmm. oh no there are desserts there's like cookies and stuff that are really good and of course there's ice cream um and that's when, yeah. And so usually my schedule goes for when I get to the island is usually uh, how many times you go there? Twice. I've been there twice. So both times at family time in the morning, right? And I usually that's when I get in my hammock and just play a little bit. Uh, then usually there's a basketball tournament. So they, there's stuff you can do on the island. Also, there's like a little basketball hoop, and there's like there uh, is. Yeah, man. Oh my god. Yeah, there's like uh, I think like pool tables and stuff like that. I'm not sure if they're pool tables, but there's other like built. I think, I think there are pool tables and like uh, ping pong. Really? Yeah, and there's wow. like a place we can play checkers and chess and all that. So usually <laughs> midday, there's you can go play. There's like a, a free throw tournament. So the first time I went there, I'm like, well, I'm gonna go, you know, do some do this right because I, I have a pretty good shot, right? Wouldn't you say Alex yes. have a pretty good shot, right? So I go and, and no one was there. The second time some- So you worked. won? No, yeah, I did win. I won the first time. <laughs> so what'd you time, win? By default. <laughs> I won some ice cream. That was it? The ice cream's free. I won it. But it's free. What? <laughs> <laughs> Don't pop so, his bubble, uh, Alex. He won. <laughs> so usually I play basketball and then we drop the kids off, go to the adult beach, you know? And this is one of my stories that are pretty funny, okay? So uh-huh. we're all sitting there. We're, in, we're out in the water and- we noticed like a whole bunch of like starfish like on the ground. So we were like, we were, and so they were huge, right? So we were like, and we met some other people out there and they're like, 
hey, these starfish are like crazy. We're like, yeah, right? So I'm there with like me, a couple of my friends, and a couple of people we met and Mel. And then I pick one up. I'm like looking at it. I'm like, I'm not sure if this is real. This looks like fake, right? So we're like looking for like, you know, castaway key on it or Disney, some kind of Disney symbol. Uh-huh. And then we're sitting, all of a sudden there looking at a group. And all of a sudden I'm like, ah, ah. And I put the starfish like up to my face. I'm like, it's getting me. It's getting me, right? Like it was real, kind of joking around, you know? So it was fake. No, man, it was, was it real. A dried out starfish. Well, or I don't know what. I, I don't know what. I guess starfish are like hard. And then the, the lifeguards like, sir, sir, please. Well, if they dry put out, down, they're hard. Put down the wildlife. Put down the wildlife. But it was in the water. It no, was, it was in, in the yeah. So it didn't move. No, man, was it moving? But the thing is, the thing is this. Okay, is that I thought I still after I picked it up, I thought it was fake. But why would the, the guy yelled at me, right? And he was like going to kick me out of How there. How far was he? He was far. But so dude, it, it, it so was, he wouldn't known if it was an actual like, I mean, if he was far away, starfish aren't that big, about the size of your palm of your hand, right? Like, no, it's take, some big starfish. No, he said it was really big. Like it was massive. Man. This starfish was like, I don't know how to. Explain, like, and you can't yeah. tell if it was. I'm having a hard time understanding. I said, I said you, when did you see a mouth? And he said, No, I didn't see a mouth. It looked fake, man. Like I think it was. It up. <laughs> maybe. So why did the guy tell me to put it down? Maybe he's just his. He just tells everybody to put everything down. Right. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but then I went to like you know you can go to like an aquarium. You can kind of have like a touchy feely like you know little area for yeah. the kids yeah. and stuff like that. And I looked at starfish. I couldn't tell if it was real or fake too, man. But it was definitely <laughs> real. <laughs> Some of them are hard. They're like hard on the outside. Yeah, I think, they got like know? little bumps on them and stuff. Yeah, yeah. This thing, this thing was massive. <laughs> you well, get pet starfish. Maybe I should learn more about them. <laughs> Back to your previous statement: killing off the coral. It's so it's okay because because of what was said in this uh, fake history. Yeah, yeah. It's okay to blast away live animals. Coral, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> remove a shell off of the beach and sell it. Darn you! You no 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 no. I wasn't trying to sell it. No, no not no, you. In this history, oh, in the okay, history. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. he's like, don't sell, don't do that. Yeah. It's not, oh, okay, okay, okay. It's okay. not ecological. Okay. Right. She's not allowed to take shells off of a beach. <laughs> but we're gonna blast away the marine life. Yeah, that part's not in the story, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Many cruisers get off the ship early at Castaway Key. However, because of the process is so easy, you won't experience those awful lines to disembark, which some other cruise lines have. Remember to take your key to the world card with you. This is your way to get on and off the ship. You also use your KTTW for any purchases that you want to make on the island. Another Disney cruise tip that people with young children need to know is that you do not have to bring a stroller off the ship. Disney has everything covered for you. There is free stroller rentals right off the ship. There are also free wheelchairs available too, with huge wheels so that you can take them on the beach. You will pass the Disney Castaway Key post office on your right. This is a great place to send a postcard as it will be stamped with the Castaway Key postmark. It will take some time to reach its destination, but it's a cool thing to do. You will need to decide if you want to take the Castaway Tram or not. Just like at the parks, sometimes waiting for trams is not quicker than walking it. There are multiple beaches designed for certain experiences. The closest beach to the ship is Castaway Key Family Beach. As you would expect, this is the most popular beach. The Disney Wonder and Magic have many fewer guests than the Disney Dream and Fantasy. This means that you will have fewer people on the island if you are on the classic ships. No matter which ship you arrive on, Castaway Key never seems that crowded. If you want to get your preferred spot on the Castaway Key Family Beach, you should still be one of the first groups of guests off the ship. If you are children free, you will definitely want to visit Serenity Bay Castaway Key. This is the adults only beach. If you want a fabulous, perfect, and pretty much empty beach, you will find it on Serenity Bay Castaway Key. If you have children with you, you can leave the kids in Scuttles Cove if you want to catch some time on Serenity Bay. There is also the teen hideout beach for those over 13 who probably don't want to spend the whole day with their parents. One of the most sought after commodities on Disney's private island are the Castaway Key Cabanas. If your budget can stretch to a Castaway Key Cabana, you will be very happy in your very own private paradise. However, you have to be very lucky to get one. There are 24 Castaway Key Cabanas, and they generally all sell out as soon as booking opens. They offer you your own haven of shade and comfort on the island. There are wooden cabana structures that have the front open to one of the Castaway Key beaches. They also give the lucky few who book them some extra things such as free rafts, tubes, and snorkel gear. If you book a Castaway Key Cabana, you will receive a note with special instructions in your stateroom. Here you will get a wristband so you can be identified as having snagged an elusive cabana reservation. 
Once you get off the ship, you will go to the Disney Castaway Key Cabana check-in. Once you have checked in, a helpful cast member will take you by golf cart to your very own cabana. If you want anything, then a cast member can be easily called with the push button in the cabana. They will even come back and transport you anywhere you want to go with a golf cart at any time during your stay. Another great perk of the Castaway Key Cabanas is that you get your very own hammock. You will have use of your own refrigerator, which is stocked with hand towels, bottled water, and soda. There is a safe, which is great for peace of mind if you are carrying cameras and phones. There is also a power socket. There will be basic snacks in your cabanas, such as fruit, bags of chips, and granola bars. You are even provided with sunscreen, sand toys, and magazines. There is a freshwater shower and a changing curtain for privacy. You can also have music in your cabanas. If you have young children, you can request a pack and play. The one thing that you don't get with your Castaway Key Cabana is a bathroom. As you can imagine, all of this comes at a price. The Family Beach Cabana is $549 and accommodates up to 6 guests. The Grand Family Beach Cabana is $899 and will accommodate up to 10 people. The Serenity Bay Beach Cabana is $399 and will accommodate 4 guests. You can add extra guests to each Castaway Key Cabana for an extra fee. You can spend the whole day on Disney's Castaway Key simply relaxing on the beach, but there are also many activities on the island to keep you occupied. Some of the activities are free, such as Pelican Plunge on the Family Beach. This is a 20,400 square foot floating platform that has slides and water cannons. It is a lot of fun for the kids. Spring and Leak is also a lot of fun, particularly for smaller children. It is a 2,400 square foot water splash area. It has lots of water fountains and sprinklers for the kids to play in. You really can enjoy Castaway Key without spending any additional money at all. However, there are some activities for an extra cost, which may interest you and your family. So, wouldn't you agree, both of you, that that is a good value for that cabana? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were talking the whole way through. Joe's like, what? What's going on? I mean, I don't think that was a I mean, that's no, kind of a lot of money. It is a lot of money. But I if mean, you're there you all day. for it, though. Yeah, if you're we, there all day. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they going to golf cart me around? Come on. I, I'm a sucker for not walking. Yeah, man, but it's kind of right, like exactly. you don't need to that, do those. And that's things, just though. one of the small things. And, yeah. and, and then you got to think how many people for the one. It's a bigger one. Mm -hmm. And if you get if you're there with someone else, like another family, then you split the cost. Yeah, yeah. We'll but it's not that. a deal breaker. I mean, you can definitely enjoy it and not have those things. We right. can enjoy it that much more. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's true. I mean, those I'm things like are basically nice. Basically, ringing a bell and be like, "Butler, yeah. come here." Uh, so, I think that's looked down on. <laughs> so. Uh, well, I mean, it's not like I said, do boy, get over here. <laughs> usually, girl. usually the the beach is, I mean, it's pretty crowded. Is it really? Yeah, does it doesn't make, make a difference really what boat. Um, it's not like super crowded. It's not like going to Disney, you know, like in, in, in mm -hmm. the summer crowded. It's like going to Dana, Daytona Beach during the summer crowded? Uh, about the same. Really? That's really crowded. Well, it depends on where you go. I usually don't go to where when we go to the beach to where it's super busy. I, don't I usually beach, go down period. to Ormond. Yeah. So how do you know how busy it is? Because you've been seen there. pictures. It's not like what what, what pictures are you talking about? Well, the ones with the cars that are yeah. racing no, on the dirt. No, no, it's not as crowded as that. Oh, it's okay. not as crowded as that. Uh, you can definitely ha you definitely uh, you can spread out in their space, mm -hmm. right? Um, especially when you go there earlier. The earlier the better because people are sleeping in or whatever. Also, didn't they feel the, the boat park? Hmm? They're sleeping in? Some people don't, I guess. I didn't feel it the this second it? time. I felt, I felt it oh, the really? first time. I didn't feel it the second time. Uh, d d definitely the boats, um, they do make a difference. When you're on the Magic and the Wonder, you can walk around and see people and you recognize them. Like, oh, I've seen this person were before. On, were you on both? Wh which cruise were you on when you went to the Castaway Key? I was on uh, an old one. I was on the Magic. Uh -huh. And then I also uh, I was also on the Dream. So you know the difference yeah. between the sizes. Yeah. Okay. So one's definitely a lot bigger. Does like it, you, You'll go through and, and not recognize anyone. And it makes a big difference, huh? Yeah, because there's a lot more people, right, in the same island. Uh -huh. So um, the magic is definitely a lot smaller than the, the dream. That's cool. Yep. Some of the least expensive and good value extras are the equipment rentals on Castaway Key. You need to head to Marge's Barges and Sea Charter Dock on the family beach for rentals. A float or tube rental are $10 for the day. Bicycle rentals are also a great idea. Castaway Key has a great bike trail, and you will get to see parts of the island that you usually wouldn't. These are $10 by the hour. It is a good value to get a day package which gives you snorkel equipment, rental, and an inner tube for the day, as well as bike rental for an hour. 
The price of this is $40, so this offers good value if you think you'll take advantage of all these things. There's a special area on the family beach for snorkeling. Of course, Disney puts its very own special magic on this activity, and you will find some unusual items in the water. You can rent snorkeling equipment for $29 for adults, $14 for children for the whole day. You can have a lot of fun with the boat rentals too. These are priced at $14 for a two-person paddle boat and $18 for a four-person paddle boat for 30 minutes. A hobby cat is $27 and a sea cycle is $24. You can also rent a one-person sea kayak for $14 and a two-person for $18. All prices are for 30 minutes and are rented from the family beach. One of the most popular of all of the Castaway Key excursions is the Castaway Ray's Stingray Adventure. If you want to get up close and personal and learn something about these creatures, if you want to get up close and personal and learn something about these creatures, this very popular adventure is for you. The current price is $52 for adults and $41 for children under 10. Your kids have to be at least 5 years old to participate. It is limited in numbers each day, so it is advisable to book the excursion as soon as you can. One of the most expensive of the Castaway Key excursions is the parasailing experience. This is available for anyone aged over 8 and the experience costs $104. There are three barbecue locations on Disney's Castaway Key. Cookies 1 is located closest to ship on the family beach and tends to be less busy than Cookies 2, which is further in but also on the family beach. They both serve the same menu. It is a typical barbecue and you certainly won't go hungry. There is also a Serenity Bay barbecue. If you can possibly eat there, we recommend it. The Serenity Bay Beach is the least crowded of all the areas on Castaway Key, so that is an obvious advantage. They also sometimes serve dishes that aren't on the family beach. You do need to be aware that the buffet is not open the whole time you are on Castaway Key. It typically opens late morning and will close by 2 p.m. There is a selection of salads and fruit as you first enter the buffet area. You will also usually find hamburgers, hot dogs, ribeye steaks, rotisserie chicken, Cajun mahi mahi, and barbecue pork ribs. If you are vegan or have other special dietary needs, it is best if you ask your servers about this when you are on the ship. They will make sure that you are catered for and will tell you which particular venue to go to. You will also find the usual barbecue favorites, such as corn on the cob, fries, and fresh fruit. There are some good chocolate chip cookies to enjoy, but the best is the self-service ice cream station located next to the Serve Yourself soda bars at each of the three barbecue venues on the island. Just as on the cruise ship, all the soda and ice cream are free. If you want to enjoy a more adult drink on the island, of course there are plenty of places you can purchase these too. There are four bars on Disney's Castaway Key. The very best is of course located on Serenity Bay, the Castaway Air Bar. There are four bars on Disney's Castaway Key. The very best is of course located on Serenity Bay, the Castaway Air Bar. This is a mix of rum, passion fruit, and piña colada which will make your time on Castaway Key all the more memorable. The other bars on Castaway Key also serve the same menu. The Sand Bar and Conked Out Bar are both close to the family beach. The closest bar to the ship is the Heads Up Bar, which is near to the Castaway Ray's Stingray Venture. Prices for all the bars are pretty reasonable. You can enjoy a cocktail for less than $6. The bars are not the only place where you can enjoy a premium drink. There is the Summertime Freeze Frozen Drink venue. As everyone knows, Disney's Frozen is everywhere. It is obvious that Olaf is a perfect fit to permanently live on Castaway Key. You can find some great smoothies. The names of the drinks are pure genius and include Worth Melting For, Sven's Carrot Delight, and Frozen Heart. The prices here are $5.95 or $11.95 if you want the souvenir Olaf Cup. There are Disney Kids Clubs available on Castaway Key. You can check your kids into a supervised program just as you can on the ship. There is also a Castaway Key activity, which is exclusively for teens, which they may really enjoy. This includes a kayaking adventure, cycling, snorkeling, as well as a tour of Disney's private island. The shopping on Castaway Key is surprisingly limited. There really isn't that much to see, but there are some small shops to browse on the island. She sells seashells and everything else, and by the seashore sells Castaway Key merchandise, which can make a nice souvenir. Cultural Illusions sells Bohemian craft items. A trip to Disney Castaway Key really is one of those experiences which you remember for a lifetime. Then you will want to work out how you can do it all again soon. 
I wonder if those prices, is that including the uh, Bohemian tax or is that flat? Uh, I'm not sure. No idea. Taxes, I'm not sure. If to, I don't remember. Uh, all I do know is that I can't wait to go back. And as soon as things get a little better and we feel a little bit more comfortable by go- going out to mm-hmm. places, uh, we definitely want to book a cruise. Yeah, we want to do a cruise eventually. And I think I'll make sure that if we do do a cruise, we'll try to do one of the smaller boats. Okay. And try to do Castaway Key. Why smaller boat? Because did you not listen to the history? It's less crowded. Yeah. What's well, it's not it really? I don't think it's. Well, no. It, there's definitely a big difference. You're right. I mean, what's the advantage of going on the big boats? The big boats. I mean, they're newer ships. He's refuting what, what you just researched, Alex. They're they're newer ships, so that means like the technology on it's new. Do you nah. want to go ahead and have like older ships, which is still really nice, or do you want to go ahead like for example, like the newer ships have these cool games you can go around, like you have to do like a Muppet, like treasure hunt and all these different things. I don't have to run like, around. And that's not technology. I mean, when they could have implemented that on and <laughs> Yeah, but I mean there's like little doors with Muppets. So you could go towards a door and there's like uh uh-huh. It's definitely this newer technology too, but there's like a little door and it opens up a little bit. And like a Muppet hand pops out and like a Muppet talks to you, and you have to go ahead and to go look at you know floor what? two, or whatever. Yeah. So some guy is waiting there for you. No, to open man, the door? it's technology. It's like animatronics <laughs> or something. I don't know. I'm not sure if a little hand pops out, but you can, it's definitely a little door that opens up and something happens. Uh-huh. It's almost like when you do uh, Sorcerers of Magic Kingdom, you uh-huh. know, and the little things move and something right. happens. It's well, kind of like a TV that. screen. Not all of them, though. Not everything. I'm um, sources of ma- uh, magic. Kingdom. Small thing. Oh, but... I'm th- I'm thinking about the treasure map hunt that Pirates of the Caribbean. No, I haven't done that. Yeah, so that's kind of like it's it's kind of like that. Mm-hmm. And I think some of the stuff moves. And that's why you should pay you the more money. And get the, bigger, the pirates one. No, yeah, not yet. No, really? we we you actually get... grabbed the map the last time we were there, and uh, it was too. Hot. If you do two of them, you get free fast passes yeah, to the pirates. Or you can just wait for the fireworks to go off and get right on. <laughs> or you can just wait in there. line like everybody else. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, do, do you want to wait in line for 60 minutes? 60 minutes or do 30 minutes of treasure hunting and then get right. a fast pass? Yeah. Yeah. Quick fire, quick facts. Let's go. Disney's current lease will expire in 2096. Why is a palm tree so big? All Disney lovers know that Disney never wants anything to look out of place, so that giant palm tree is actually a not-so-cleverly disguised communications tower located in the middle of the island disguised as a palm tree. There are some signs around Castaway Key that pay tribute to the executives at Walt Disney Parks and Resorts. Two water sewage plants are hidden on the island out of the view of guests. They actually turn seawater into fresh water for use on the island. A retired submarine from the retired 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea ride in Magic Kingdom is submerged in the snorkeling area of the family beach. You can also find statues of Minnie Mouse and Mickey Mouse underwater in the sea. If you think you might want to be a castaway on the island, you can find available jobs on the Disney Cruise Line's career listings under Island Opportunities. On Castaway Key, an innovative recycling program repurposes used cooking oil from ships, galleys, and combines it with diesel fuel to power machinery on the island. There is a gumbo limbo tree that Disney planted on the island. Cast members call it the tourist tree because its red peeling bark resembles a sunburnt tourist. We here at DizHiz think Castaway Key is an amazing experience. And if you're thinking of booking a cruise, you must book one with Castaway Key as a stop because you will never see or experience another place like it. Before we get into memories, I just want to go ahead and talk about uh, this month we're going to do a giveaway. Mm-hmm. We're going to be giving away a wax melt from uh, Three Chicky Chicks mm-hmm. and our Patreon. Cool. So, yep, just go ahead and uh, join our Patreon if you're interested in that, and we'll go ahead and get you Three Chicky Chicks. We'll, you guys can pick uh, you know, the smell, the scent, and uh, we'll go ahead and get that out to you. Well, first off, what is Three Chicky Chicks? You know, there's nothing better than smelling that Disney smell. If it's walking into your favorite Disney resort or entering your favorite Disney attraction. Three Cheeky Chicks Wax Company offers an array of Disney-inspired scents in their home fragrance line. Wax melts, scented candles, and room sprays. To bring your favorite Disney scents to your home, check them out at MagicallyScented.com. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys don't have any memories, right? So I I'm not do going? not. No. You don't, Alex? No. I did take that Apple 3D virtual tour. Did you really? Oh, did you really? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Apple 3? What is that? No, the Apple 3, you go to the maps and you go to 3D and it does like a little fly oh, okay. in certain places. So I do have a memory and I have many memories there, but this one is a pretty good one where I ate thir- 13 ice cream cones in one day. I've heard about this memory. Yeah. So pretty much, I'm not sure if I, I probably mentioned it on a previous podcast, but I went to go play basketball. And no one was there. So then I was like, well, I'm going to go hang out with my family. Actually, uh, just to cut you off, this is a new one. You talked about the uh, 
baguettes or the beignets beignets you talk about those you've never talked about this This is a whole new story from you oh yeah well that's pretty good i guess buckle up so there's no i mean so there's no one there playing basketball i Uh went to go find my family and i was like oh look at this good ice cream right i found this ice cream station and had strawberry and banana mixed together Mm. which was like a flavor i never had before there right and so I was like, let me go ahead and try this. Delicious. I was like, well, it's so good. I'm going to go ahead and have like another one. So I had two right there. They're not like the biggest, right? <laughs> You've but never I, had strawberry and bananas mixed together? I mean, not, not, I've never had it. I have had wow. it. I've had it. I've had it, but I didn't have it there. Like this was a new flavor that I saw there on the island I've, or on the Disney cruise boat because they have ice cream, machi- she, uh, they have ice cream uh-huh. machines on the boat. This is the first time I've seen that flavor, right? So I'm like, this is delicious, mm. right? So I had to, they went to go find my family and I had to walk, you know, like halfway through half the island, whatever. Couldn't find them. I was like, well, you know, I'm over, I'm over here. I'm going to have some more ice cream. I see another ice cream station, had ice cream. Then I walked to, back to the other side of the island to see if they were on the other side of the island. Uh-huh. Couldn't find them. So I was like, well, I think I'm going to have some more ice cream. So I had some more ice cream. Then I had to go find them, right? Halfway back, I stopped and got some some more ice cream. <laughs> then I walked to the. It means a lot of walking. Were yeah. you justifying each it's ice cream out. cone by I'm burning it off? I am, man. I'm burning it off. So I got back to where I was originally, had some more ice cream, and then I found them eating lunch somewhere. And I was like, oh hey guys, you know, I found this awesome ice cream. You guys need to try it. And so when they went to go try it, of course I had to have some more. <laughs> ate some more ice cream. And then we walked to the adult beach, whatever to go because that's where they were eating with the kids the kids were eating before we dropped them off at uh-huh. the scuttles the scuttle Cove. place scuttles cove yeah and of course i had some more before i got on the tr- tram and then i had a whole bunch more after that so i had like 13 ice creams in one day so scuttles cove is there a bird there like is uh scuttle i don't, I don't remember off the no. top of my head i mean it's been it's been a while like over a year since i've been there but <laughs> i know yeah, that is a long time yeah <laughs> i thought about this like four or five years yeah. <laughs> No, no. I mean, we've been in COVID for six months. I am sure you can remember a year ago. What? I don't. I don't remember pre-COVID. You don't remember? Pre-COVID? <laughs> <laughs> this is this is all is I this know. PC now. or or AC? This, this, this is all I know now. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's pretty funny though because people, when you're on the cruise ship, the you have like your door right. They go and people put magnets over the door, right? Mm-hmm. And so people actually put magnets of how many ice creams they eat. Oh, so they man. have like, you know, like dad and then they have like, you know, Adam, whatever. And then they'll sit there and they'll have like an ice cream off where they put how many ice creams they've eaten and try to oh, out ice cream each other. Yeah. That'd be so much awesome. It is, man. It's so much fun. Because there's ice cream everywhere. There's ice cream everywhere on the boat. So how many magnets all together were on your door? Well, I didn't do that. Oh, I need loser. to start doing it. I need to start doing that with someone. I don't know. If you do it, I feel like, I feel like you look at the door and be like, oh man, maybe I should <laughs> stop with the ice cream. No way. I, you got to work out in the mornings. You know, that's what, I, that's what I do. I work out early in the morning, wake up, get my coffee, breakfast, breakfast work out. You know? Yeah, but that many ice creams, you you need to work out all day to burn that off. I, all I got to do is go run for an hour. I'm good. I can eat like 50 ice creams. Okay. I'm sure that's still only like 500 calories burnt. Yeah, but I'll be fine. <laughs> you got to equal it out. I wouldn't care. I that's what I do in real life. I, I know. That's, that's what I do in real life. I'm like, okay, I can just work out like a crazy man and then eat whatever I want. So, Niels has a question that he has been dying to ask us for like a month now. Okay. So, I guess we'll see what he has to... Let's do it. Ask us. Well, hold on. Is Niels coming in? Niels is in this coming in the studio? Hey, Niels, what's going on, man? Make sure you put your mask on and uh, go ahead and get on the couch. I don't think they're allowed to leave the country, are they? I don't know. <laughs> hey, guys. Time for a new question. This time, I would like to know which Disney Universe character you would like to be for a day. In the Disney parks, of course, to meet guests and maybe even be part of a parade or a stage show. Looking forward to hear your choices, your runner-ups, and your considerations. Really wondering if one of you wants to be a princess for a day. <laughs> <laughs> Niels, come on, man. I don't uh-huh. know. Be a princess for a day? I think I would be okay with that. Uh, Let's go one day. One day be a princess. I'm the kind of ugliest a, princess ever. I would be an ugly princess. <laughs> but I mean, I would do it, I guess. <laughs> Um, I think I'd have to pick Donald Duck. Oh, yeah. Because I don't know. You can, I Donald Duck's when you meet Donald Duck, he's nice and everything. But then he can always be like, uh, in your face or kind of like play around in a sense, like he's as if he's mad at you. So you don't have to always be on the cheerful side to be Donald Duck. Mm-hmm. So I think that'd be fun. Okay. Any runner runner ups? Goofy would be runner up. Okay. Yeah. So I think I would want to be. I think I would want to be Captain Hook. 
I think yeah. I would want to be Captain Hook, yeah. Because, you know, the mean, like, you want to be Donald Duck, because Donald Duck's a little grumpy, right? Yeah. Right? It always seems like the grumpy characters and the characters that have a little, you know, they're angry or have a little bit more fun, maybe a little bit more fun to play, right? Because whenever, like, for example, when I went on um, A Rise of the Resistance, those the cast members mm-hmm. who were playing the, you know, the Empire mm-hmm. or the First Order, I mean, they just looked like they were having fun, just giving yeah. people a hard time, yeah. you know? Even, like, when we went to Primetime Cafe, and the, the waiters, people, the waitresses. I mean, they're having. It looks like they're having fun, right? It must be yeah. fun, but like, hey, you know, kind of get on someone. Uh, yeah. So I think that I would want to be Captain Hook. Would it be I, Captain Hook with the big fake head? Yeah, yeah, it would be the big <laughs> fake head. I would, and I think a runner up. I think I would want to be Mickey. Really? Yeah, I think that'd be fun too. I think I two opposites. You know, I got Captain Hook, kind of grumpy. Mickey's kind of like Mickey, and everyone wants to be with Mickey. So I think that'd be cool too. And mm. it's not just any Mickey. It would have to be. The Magic Mickey. Magic Mickey. Yep. For sure. How about so you, So I went the same direction, but I actually went with a fun character, not a grumpy fun character, Dale, because oh, yeah. you can't have fun and you don't have to be grumpy. And I definitely have to have a mask over my face because I have uh, public anxiety. So, you know, if you're doing it in disguise and no one knows it's you. Right. That's true. Yeah. Joe, you'd be the tallest Mickey ever. Yeah. Sure. I, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be able to do Mickey. He doesn't be Mickey on stilts. I mean, Mortimer. Mortimer. <laughs> yeah. Mortimer <laughs> Mouse. I don't think he's. I think he's the same size as Mickey. Yeah, he's a little taller. It's the ears. I know. Right, but the head still cuts <laughs> off. Will you squeeze your head into an ear? <laughs> yes, I can do it. I have a small head. I'm just joking. I don't have a small head. <laughs> okay, so what were my expectations? I was thinking that Joe would choose Stitch, as he never gets enough of visiting Ohana restaurant. Adam might have chosen Pocahontas, as he paints beautiful things with all the colors of the wind. And last but not least, Alex. I think he fits Oaken, the tough-looking, humble, red-bearded shopkeeper from Frozen. Anyway, I would love to be Goofy, as he can interact with guests anonymously while making fun of them and doing crazy things. Till next time. Oh, and wait, one little joke. One that doesn't have to end up in your cutting floor room this time. So, what would be the name of the coffee kiosk at the exit of Galaxy's Edge? Starbucks. Bye. (laughs) Starbucks. Okay. I think Neil's... Two uh, things wrong with Neil's on what? me. Hello. One, I am not shaving my legs <laughs> to be Pocahontas, oh. and I am way too pale. But, but, I mean, you're like an artist, though, and the colors of the wind and colors, you're good with, with all mm-hmm. that stuff. I think you did a pretty good job of uh, getting us, you know, me doing... I do love Ohana. Yeah, you do. Yeah, and I'm, I'm kind of like Stitch a little bit. I'm a little angry sometimes, and then, and then I'm, 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 I'm kind of mischievous, I would say. I, I guess, I'm yeah. a little mischievous. And you being the, the big, bike Vi- not bearded Viking, person, bearded person a, yeah, that's pretty good. Well, good a, job, Neil. I think he did. A good I mean, job. he's a redhead, right? Isn't he? I'm not a redhead. Who? No, you're not. You uh. have a red beard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any, Usually, when someone has a red beard, their hair is red. You're just an uh, anomaly. So I'm not an anomaly. <laughs> yeah. I'm half ginger. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think, and Neil's. I think Neil's from the be, nose down. <laughs> I think Neil's will be a good goofy. He's yeah, pretty. He's yeah. he's pretty funny. Kind he, of he a has, lighthearted. He's a character. tall and lanky. Yeah, he's tall, yeah. right? Yep. That one time he came into the studio, you know, got a good representation of his height. That'd be nice on to the have screen. Uh, Niels come in here one time. Yeah, book that flight, Niels. As soon as uh, you're allowed in. So what you got? What'd you do, Adam? I did not do anything. I had too long of a list for the last episode. I you decided did. not to do anything. Should have cut time. in half and brought some of it last week. So yeah, but that'd sure. be cheating. Yeah, I guess. I mean, they don't know at home. You didn't do anything. Watch no. anything on Disney Plus? No, I didn't. Okay. How about you, Alex? Uh, I watched the Muppets Now. Oh, it just came out today. That's new, huh? Yeah. What'd you think of that? Well, not today for the listeners, but yeah, when for, we're recording today for us, yeah. And it was really bad. Was it really? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was not very good. We've only seen one episode so far, but I'm who not. was on it? Was they, they have guests? No, they just had the Muppets. They yeah. had, you know what? I'm sorry, they did have guests. They had uh, Diggs was on it. I uh-huh. forget his first name. Ty David. Ty Diggs. Oh, yeah, okay. David Diggs. <laughs> Who's David Diggs? The guy David from uh, Hamilton. Oh, is his last name Diggs? David or isn't David it? Diggs? Yeah, oh, okay. David. <laughs> All right, no, yeah. Ty Diggs uh, was on it with Miss Piggy, and uh, I don't know. It just they had like little skits. It just wasn't very good. It wasn't like the original Muppets. Okay. They said it was being more like more original Muppets, but it's not. It's like supposed to be an online show, mm-hmm. like streaming. Okay, and kind of uh, like iCarly. No, no, no. More like like they're all <laughs> quarantined, so they're doing stuff at their house. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And uh, I'm sure that's kind of hard to do. 
with Muppets? With, I mean, it's COVID. I mean, it's kind of hard to do that when you can't be in a studio somewhere. I guess, yeah. But well, no, it wasn't that great. Yeah, but they can still be in studio. I mean, everyone's They're doing Muppets. the I don't know self-isolation for a while. You yeah. Know, the bu- well, being in their bubble. Well, they yeah. done that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But uh, other than that, uh, we watched, uh, we started watching Hamilton with my daughter. Okay. A little bit. She hasn't seen the sh- movie yet. She's heard the songs. Yeah. She, she likes seen, them. She likes the songs. She likes right? songs, and we were watching it. We put it on at night uh, while we're, before we go to bed, and I had to end up turning off because she was like dancing around the living room. We're like, <laughs> this is not helping her calm down for, uh-huh. for, for bed. So I had to turn it off. But uh, so we'll get back to it and finish it some other time. Okay. And I just uh, was continuing to read King- Kingdom Keepers. Uh, and that's pretty much something I would say I did Disney. Um, my wife and I, we've been watching West Wing a lot, which I know is not Disney, but so we've been really, you know, putting our extra time into that, getting through those seasons. Did you guys see the, any news? You guys got any news about Disney? Um, no. They changed the uh, kiosk or the the queue for um, Smugglers, not Smugglers Run, the other one. What do you mean? What's the... The newest, Rise of the Resistance? Yes, Rise of the Resistance. Now you can only get in at 10 and 2. Oh, really? Yeah, so you get into the park and then at For the 10, virtual queues, you Right, mean? the virtual okay. queues is open at 10 and 2 now. Uh, You know, at some point during the week, they had drained the water at um, uh, Splash Mountain. Splash Mountain, but yeah. then it's back up. Oh, it is back up? Yeah, Okay. so it wasn't So it wasn't to shut down to go ahead and do the refurb or whatever? No, not okay. yet. There's no, that would be impossible to do it that quick. No, no. I mean, but we thought it was shutting. Like People it was shutting it was down. Shutting it was, down it was to done. Be shut down completely. Like Splash Mountain was done. Like it was. It wasn't that open back but up. But just and, the pre-production of building the things would probably take a year to two years, right? Before they even go ahead and have to shut it down, you right? Mean, yeah, oh, like maybe, the animatronics. Yeah, stuff. everything behind in the warehouse. That's going to take. You know, yeah, I guess that's a true. Long time. But remember, they said they were think they've been thinking about it for a year, right? But so I mean, they already started production. And that'd be things. interesting if they did start doing it before they this whole thing started. Yeah, like the, but then had, we would have yeah. already seen leaks of right. that yeah. they're not just template designs. Right, right. Had but it has production. been, but it has been leaking, I guess, for a while though. Yeah, but yeah. R- drawings and stuff like that, not mm-hmm. actual building. The I mean, because look at Spider Man. Spider Man's been leaked for how long? Like over probably about almost two years now. Oh, you're talking the about the Spider-Man that yeah. just, uh, flies in the sky? Yeah, you yep. saw that when it was a stick that you know could mm-hmm. flip. Yeah, that thing's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, actually, that? another news. Uh, Tim Tracker was at Magic Kingdom, mm-hmm. yeah, and he got a shot of lightning oh, striking yeah. the castle. Yeah, oh, that's really? Crazy. Yep. Wow. Because it is a giant rod up right. there to purposely direct the lightning there, instead of the people oh. down below. Mm-hmm. So he missed it the first time, and someone you hear here in the background, like, "Oh, did you get that?" He goes, "No, I wasn't recording." And then, like a minute later, it did it again. Really? Oh, wow. That'd be cool. Yeah. I wonder if that damage that must damage the castle. No, because it's going hitting a lightning rod. Just yeah. like oh, if you go to your school, you'll rod see rod. all the little yeah. rods. Yeah, so it's meant for that. Oh, right, right. So in the news, you guys see about this person who tried to sneak in some weapons and uh, some drugs into Epcot. I heard about the weapons. I didn't hear about the drugs. Yeah, yeah. Who like that's not too smart to do. No, <laughs> no. Especially when they say on the tram, you know, make sure if you have anything that shouldn't be allowed into the park, some of those things, to leave it in your car. I mean, they don't have to say that on the tram. That's just common knowledge, not to bring drugs. But, and gun, yeah, but they do and say it, though. I mean, yeah, they do. They say do. They do. Any yeah. weapons. I mean, I think at that point, the guy was ready to bring it in no matter what. I don't think he, <laughs> you don't, I think right. he was on the tram like, what? I can't bring this in? <laughs> oh, man, I got to go back to my car. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, when they say weapons, because it's a common thing for... Uh, even a uh, small pistol, you know, you can yeah. conceal and carry, or a lot of people love carrying knives on them. Mm-hmm. So it's just like a friendly reminder to be like, oh, are you that guy from Texas who likes to carry a six inch buck knife on you all the time? Mm-hmm. Bring it back to your car. <laughs> yeah. And they, you're not even allowed to have mace. You have to bring pepper spray. You have to leave it in the car too. I don't think you can bring pepper spray either. What are you going to do when the bears attack you? That's true. <laughs> But my mom, she had pepper spray, and we were just taking the monorail to go to uh, like one of the resorts, the Polynesian. Mm-hmm. And you, before you got on the monorail, you had to go ahead and go through security, and they took away her pepper spray. Oh, really? Yep. Sorry for anyone that lives in Texas. I wasn't trying to offend you. <laughs> Actually, when I was working a uh, summer camp, my wife was working summer camp, and one of the kids had a big knife in his backpack and they went on a field trip that day. Oh gosh. And so they had to call his dad to come pick him up from the field trip area because he wasn't allowed to be admitted to the field trip. And his dad's like, I told him not to bring the knife. It's like, what? What? <laughs> yeah, it's like, why would he even, <laughs> why even bring that anyway? <laughs> why does he have yeah. a giant knife? So that's the His on Castaway Key. I'm Joe. I'm Alex. I'm Adam. Thanks for listening and have a magical week.
Go to dizhiz.com where you can find links to all of our episodes, our social media accounts, and to our Patreon page where you can help us out and hear more from each of the shows. We also do monthly giveaways for our Patreon subscribers. Thanks for listening and have a magical week.